Alright, hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. It is me, the Drukage, here with another what if or what if movie. And today's what if we're going to be doing what if Deku was Itachi's reincarnate. Now, this I might not upload this, I might and I might not upload this soon because I will be leaving soon to go focus on my schoolwork somewhere else, so I won't be have access to any of my recording. Go well. I might have some access to my recording equipment. The question is, will I, you know, continue to make thumbnails and things like that? I might just bring my thumbnail equipment or my recording equipment and just leave thumbnails behind for now and just focus on the series that I've already made thumbnails for. So, yeah, there won't be any new series coming out. And the series that I record on the on my other device... It will be uploaded to YouTube from that device, so if they're a big lackluster, that's why. Now, actually, I'm. I actually might be able to take um to take it take it with me. Actually, I might be able to make the thumbnails with me. Actually, so never mind. I'll be taking everything I have with me. My, I'll just be putting my microphone on a portable stand. But yeah, the intro is already a minute long. I'm sorry. Let's get into the what if. Gang, gang, we on it. Wait, oh, wait, gang, gang, we on it. Uh. Gang, gang, we on it. Not a skateboard, but we rollin'. <laughs> Um, Deku is born, but basically starts off the day Deku is born. Deku is born to Hizashi Midoriya and Inko Midoriya, well, the, to the Midorias, and looks exactly like Itachi does, like a baby Itachi, which is who he's the reincarnate of. And Itachi was reborn into into Deku, where his spirit or soul was stuck into Deku, and it's basically somewhere. It's it basically is reincarnate. Now, I know you guys know how I do most of my reincarnate videos. The reincarnate ends up training the reincarnee. I don't know. The soul ends up training the new soul or new bodies. And things like that. That happens. That will be happening here, too. I just want you guys to get a heads up on why Deku is, you know, one day just gonna, boom, be able to do every jutsu Itachi does. And more jutsu that not even Itachi can do. So, yeah. Anyways, let's get into the what if. Oh, let's get into this. Finish the story. You make it to the story. Anyways, sorry about that. So Deku would look exactly like Itachi and would grow up to be a very smart child, having a very perceptive outlook on life, much like how Itachi did. How Itachi thought like a Hokage. Deku was extremely smart and was actually known when it comes to his classwork. He was known to be a prodigy. But when, around the time, even at a young age, he was known to be smarter than red than most. Deku has done things that not no normal child or child born with a quirk has ever done. Like, he was very smart. He began to walk at around the age of six months. Or, no, I don't think that's enough. I think that's enough, maybe. He began to talk around a year. And so on and so forth. But the year that every um he turned four, everyone had already gotten their quirks, and he would be going to the quirk doctor on this day to see if he had a quirk. Now I'm actually going to be taking a book from another what if I can't remember exactly which what if it was. Oh, I just watched it. it was what if Deku had the written gun? It was a tested speech what if or a fan fiction. I want to be taking something from there. So the man tells um or the doctor calls Inko out of the room so that he could test Deku when he would call in someone named um I wanted to say his name is Hisashi um Shigaraki. <clears throat> but we all know him. And this is just this is just one for um, one for all. Now, one for all, who would um hand big would begin to grow as he would take away Deku's quirk, the thing that makes Deku proud. Now, Deku's quirk would have been a pyrokinesis quirk. Now, actually, 
Um, it would have been more like how Benny Mars' powers work. Like, he can create fire and he can snuff out any, uh, I don't, okay. He's a really good fire user. He would have been able to control all flames that are around him, whether they're his or someone else's, either whether it's from someone else's quirk or not. And if he trains it and, and he comes across someone else who has this, like, the same type of quirk, like a fire, pyrokinetic quirk, then that his would have been stronger. It depends on how hard he trains it. Now, obviously, all for one would take his quirk and would then diagnose Deku quirkless. Now, the reason why is because Deku doesn't recognize him because this is the man who left him months after he was born. This was his father, Hizashi Midoriya, or known as Hizashi Shigaraki in this what if. So, yes, Hizashi Midoriya was just a ruse so that he could produce powerful children with powerful quirks. He actually has done this ever since he was alive and quirks came to be. He's, he's, he's been creating quirks and stealing the quirks from the children. But this will create a, such a bad, uh, such a, it would do something bad. It would cause a series of events that would end up in the worst way possible, even for all for one. I said one for all, didn't I? Oh my God, at the beginning. It's all for one. Anyways, so this, the, the doctor would call Inka back once all for one disappears or his actually disappears and would tell her that Deku is quirkless, that he does not have a quirk. Now, obviously, how Deku won't tell her his mother about the other person because what One for All did was basically he took Deku's quirk and then erased his memory and planted fake memories of the Doctor doing test. The Doctor just uses a fake, a fake X-ray of what an actual quirkless person's foot looks like. So, you know. Anyways, moving on. From this day on, Deku would be very distraught. And this is, and you know, he would ask his mom, could, does she still believe in him and being a hero? But instead of Inko crying and says she was sorry, Inko would get down on Deku's level with such a determined look and says, yes, he could definitely become a hero. That he has that DNA within his blood. Now, his mother used to, um, <clears throat> His mother's quirk is weakened over time, but she did used to be known as a powerful. He was she was a powerful hero back in her time, <clears throat> back, um, back when she was younger before she had Deku. She had given up, you know, being a hero when she found out that she was pregnant with Deku. And Deku was smiling, with hug his mother, telling her thank you because these are the words Deku wanted. Deku could still be a hero. She believes in him and becoming a hero even without a quirk. Now, this is where we time skip two years later. Now, Deku was currently with Bakugo in a forest, and well, with Bakugo's agency. And they're all exploring the forest when Deku and Bakugo uh, will be, oh, well, and everyone else will be crossing the log. But this log is slippery, and they all had to be very careful when Bakugo will fall in. But Deku will try to get down and will fall in himself. But he would hit his head on a rock. And the rest of the members of the Bakugo's agency will run away after seeing Deku starting to bleed. Now, Deku, Bakugo is doing the right thing. It will take, will drag Deku out of the forest and to the hospital. Where, they will, where he will give his mother's number. They will call um, Miski. And then she will call Inko to get her down there to tell her about Deku. Now, Deku is currently... They've been, they have diagnosed Deku with a coma, and they don't know if he'll ever wake up. <clears throat> they will tell Inko that they'll give him around a year, and if he doesn't wake up by then, they'll just pull the plug, and that'll be the end of that. Now, Inko is very saddened by this and begins to cry. Now, she doesn't blame anyone. She heard the story from Bakugo. Deku was just trying to help Bakugo. She doesn't blame anyone for this. But she just wished Deku would have been careful and none of this would have happened. Now, in Deku, Deku's currently in his mind. Or, yeah, yeah, he's trapped in his mind already. is not being able to access his body. So, and so he's in a coma. And so Deku um, would hear a voice as he would turn around as he says, So, 
you're my reincarnation and a descendant of my brother I'm guessing why do you look like me as Deku would turn around to see a man who looks like an older version of him yes Deku does not have green hair he has that black hair like Itachi which actually re remnants of his father who had an appearance changing quirk well I'm gonna say off one had a appearance changing quirk that changes hair his molecule um, they changed the DNA on the molecule, on the atomic structure. I, I'm not getting into the scientific terms. I haven't really been doing good at school, so I ain't gonna do it. Anyways, <clears throat> but besides that, all, um, he got his black hair from all for one and things like that. Now, Deku will say reincarnate, and she says, "Yes, you're my reincarnate." But he says, "There's something weird about you." As he would touch Deku, she says, how? I didn't have any children, so how are you, my descendant? Through Inko, by the way. We're not doing that through all for one. Deku says, descendant? He says, I'm guessing I'm your ancestor. But the only way someone did that is if they found So. As Itachi comes to a realization and says, so, someone has found it, huh? This being a jar of DNA, we all know what DNA I'm talking about, that Itachi had left behind on the off chance they, that Sasuke went too dark, deep in the dark and it was to be sent to the Hidden Leaf. Now this actually, <clears throat> this was actually to be sent by one of his crows in case it, Sasuke ever joined with Obito. So yes, it was sent to the Hidden Leaf. That's who Nade did receive it. She didn't tell Sasuke about it until, you know, in his late 30s. When, uh, or so Sasuke was actually the one to tell Sasuke about it. When Sasuke decided to have some um, some women, and uh, you know, get that um, get that seed implanted. And that happened. Increasing the Uchiha clan. And that's where um, Itachi came from. Um, not Deku came from. He came from one of those lines. Anyways, back into the story. Or oh, well, I was technically in the story. Anyways, <clears throat> Itachi says, <clears throat> "I can't have a weak, a weak reincarnate." So, I guess I'll train you in everything I know. Starting now, as um Itachi begins to throw punches and kicks at Deku. Deku is crawl uh, falls to the ground and begins trying to crawl, crawl away slowly from, you know, like how when white people, I'm sorry for seeing right now white people, but you know how they are in scary movies when they fall and can't get back up? Basically that. The Deku will finally be able to get up and will begin running away, but Itachi is too fast as he catches up to Deku and begins to fight him. And this will continue for the next Eight months of Deku's life in the real world. He has been constantly fighting Itachi and his mind's keep learning to fight. And this has actually been affecting his outside body too. So all that muscle memory that Deku has built up in there, he has basically, um, out in, in the um, mind's cave, he's built out in the real world. So every, it'll be, he'll basically experience the same thing. Now Inko and, every, and the doctor were all wondering why Deku was still growing and was still very healthy. Wasn't losing any muscles while he was in a coma. But yes, eight months later, Deku would finally wake up. With, But in his eyes, when, well, when he would open his eyes, Inka would hug Deku. And when she would look at him, she would see that his eyes are red with two commas in each eye. As Deku um, finally... um. Finally gets, you know, pays attention to his surroundings and he sees his mother hugging him. As he grabs his mother and hugs her back, saying, Mom, I, I missed you. As Inko says, Oh, Deku, you have me so worried. As Inko really <clears throat> has lost a lot of weight. And I mean, like, a lot. She, was, she wasn't plump like Inko later on, but she was, you know, younger Inko size. And she lost a lot more weight. Deku would ask his mom, why hasn't she been eating? As Inko says, how would he? She says that she was too worried about him to eat. As Deku says, he didn't mean to worry her, but everything's okay now. 
Now the doctors will do a couple tests and will release Deku and Deku and Inka will go home. Now Deku will be reacclimated within his life, his normal life, this being school and everything. He will continue his training by going into his mindscape as many um whenever he falls asleep, so naps during nap time and during um sleep he will always be in his mindscape training with Itachi. Now this is where we time skip to a thirteen year old Deku. But um his second year in middle school <clears throat> Itachi tells Deku to come into his mind. <clears throat> now, as soon as Deku appears in there, Itachi's eyes are different patterns. Itachi says, Sukuyomi. As he puts Deku into a Sukuyomi and shows him killing off, all, killing off Deku's friends, his aunt Miski, uh, his uncle Bakugo's father. I can't know that. I don't remember that name. That man's name for nothing. Ink his mother Inko, his his best friend Bakugo. Who in this one actually didn't wasn't as mean to Deku because he actually somewhat blames himself for what happened to Deku all those years ago. <clears throat> so Bakugo actually doesn't bully Deku too much. As much as he would normally do in canon. As Deku will begin to scream, no. As Deku will look down as he will see the blade is actually in his hands. He's the one who's been killing his entire family and everything. As he will then see a man with white hair, the doctor man who who killed um who who took his quirk assessment test. As Itachi has unlocked his memory for Deku. As Deku kills this man, but Deku finally realizes as Itachi says, You killed your own father. Deku says, My father. Hmm. For him to do such a thing to you, Deku would ask, what are you talking about? As Itachi would say, your father was the one. <clears throat> I've accessed your memories, even from the ones when you were a child. I've actually been in your body for a long time, so I actually have documentations of all of your memories, even those you won't even be able to remember. I've always been here. So I know that the man that you who took your quirk test was your father. He just changed his hair color and his facial appearance. So yes, this was actually before, um, well, and just changed his hair color. So yes, that was before the All Might versus, um, what All for One. So, obviously his face is the same. Now, <clears throat> Tachi, um, no, Tachi. Deku will be so shocked by this as he would drop the sword as his eyes will begin to hurt and they will begin to burn. As Deku has finally awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan. As Itachi says good. As Itachi snaps his finger as Deku realizes that he was in a Genjutsu. As Itachi says you have awakened your Mangekyo Sharingan. Time to train your abilities. And this is where we get into that. Um, a good year time skip. So this is around the time of Bakugo, um, around um, well, around the start of the anime. Now Deku will be um, will be picked on by Bakugo for getting into UA. Now De Bakugo does still pick on to Deku for being quirkless, but it's to an extent. He's not he's not going to tell him to kill himself, but he will blow up his book and threaten him not to go to UA, and will throw his book out. But he won't tell Deku to kill himself. Even Bakugo mostly kills that De um not kills Deku, but mostly bullies Deku because he doesn't want to lose the other two friends that he had from um that the other two friends that he's that he's made when he um while Deku was uh now while Deku was in a coma, the other two friends who saw it cool to bully the quirkless Deku, so that's why Bakugo kind of bullies Deku more uh more now than what he did earlier. Anyways. Deku would basically, um, would tell, um, would actually get a confidence boost as he would tell Bakugo that he's gonna take that exam. As he would walk away from Bakugo going outside to retrieve his notebook. Now, I know you guys are wondering, why didn't he just use his quirks or, or, or his powers that, you know, Itachi taught him? De Itachi made Deku promise not to use his his powers until he got into UA and not to use his Mangekyo abilities especially until he was um 
Not until he was actually accepted into UA. Because Deku did tell him his dream was to become a pro hero and go to UA. High school like All Might. Because it was his dream ever after. Um, it was actually his dream since he was a little kid to go to UA. So yeah, that's kind of why. Anyways, moving on. Deku would... Um, I don't want to read this. Alright. Yes. Deku would go and retrieve his, um, his book from the pond. And would walk down... Um, walk the opposite way of his um, normal route to his house. Well, he would walk to his house, but he wouldn't take the normal route. Where well, he would come across this passing, where he would then hear a sewer noise, at, um, the noise of a um, of the sewer thing, the sewer drain. I forgot what that thing is called. The manhole cover thing would pop off as a. He would then feel a sludge cover over his entire body as the sludge man would say be quiet kid it only hurt for a few seconds he says I didn't know he was in town if I did I would have never pulled this stunt and then Deku would think am I about to die I made a promise to Itachi I wouldn't use my quirk until as Itachi would tell Deku use it but it's already too late. Deku's about to be incapacitated. What he will hear. Delaware smash! As All Might has came in and punched the air. Sending the slime villain off of Deku. But Deku went into unconsciousness from the force of the blow also. Along with, you know, being suffocated by the slime monster. And when he will wake up to All Might slapping him. As Deku will begin to fanboy over All Might and will try to pick up his notebook to find um to find his notebook to get All Might's signature. But when he will find it, he will see that All Might is, well, you know, is already signed it. Now All Might will tell Deku that now that he's okay that he's gotta go. As All Might will jump off. But midair, All Might will notice. Deku is hanging on to him. As he says, Kid, what are you doing? Let go. As Deku says, I can't let go. If I do, I'll die. This is not true. He'll just, um, he could possibly just use a Susano, which Deku's actually progressed farther than what Itachi has, by the way. Just a quick heads up. <clears throat> As he says, right. As All Might sets them down slowly on a building and softly on a building, where he, Deku would then ask him, could he be a, a hero without a quirk? And All Might would tell him, no, honestly, no. The type of profession that pro heroes grow through, um, the things that pro heroes grow through are not something for, you know, normal humans. He says, but then this is where he will bring up a, um, one of the pro heroes in America who, you know, who just, who just dresses, um, a man who just dresses up and becomes a hero is being Bruce Wayne. He doesn't know, no one knows it's Bruce Wayne. All men would say, but that's different. Batman, while well, that's different, Bat the Batman has gone through multiple years of training. And from the clothes that you're wearing and how I can see that you look from wearing those clothes, you have not. Now, Deku's actually pretty muscular, like a lean build instead of a buff build or bulky build. But the clothes he wears are actually oversized and makes him look a lot smaller than what he normally is. Is all I would um then tell him no, he shouldn't be a pro hero, but he should look into being something else. Police officers and firefighters are considered heroes also. He should look into that. As all my was about to walk off when his transformation would fall, Stick would say, Who are you? Were you impersonating All Might? And All Might would say, Kid, it's me. She would show him, lift up his shirt and show him his in, um his injury. He says Around five years ago, I got into a fight that I have the, kept the media away from, so no one really knows about it, except the important people, with a man named All For One. He injured me pretty bad, causing him to remove my stomach and damage my respiratory system a lot. I can only do hero work for three hours a day. As Deku... He begins to think that's so weird. As Deku would then ask All Might what drives him to become a pro, what drives him to continuously do hero work even though he's injured. All Might would tell Deku 
that just because it doesn't draw he does he's not driven to um just because he's injury his he has an injury he's not going to let that stop him from saving as many people as possible now Deku's image of All Might was deflated when All Might shattered his dream of being a pro hero Quirk was even though he's not well he's essentially is actually he actually really is but he's not at the same time but his respect will grow for All Might even more after hearing this now, Almond would tell Deku that he has to go. And Almond would go down the stairs where he would then notice the, um, you know, the sludge monster is gone. His Almond would go around looking for it. Now, Deku would be feeling saddened where he would begin to walk around where he would then come hear an explosion. Now, Deku would go there to see what happened and see the pro heroes in work where he would see the same sludge villain from earlier. Now, Deku will begin to freak out, but this is only internally. Itachi has taught Deku to become, you know, more like him, more cold and things like that. And to control his emotions a lot better. Itachi was an envoy and had to slaughter his entire clan. Actually, that's something Deku had to do also. Now, I know you guys are wondering what I mean by that. I'll get into that later. So, um, you know, Deku will be calm on the outside, but will be freaking out on the inside. But this is when the slime villain would, you know move a little bit and the head will come out now all my has just arrived as he sees this but he sees the other heroes and thinks that they can handle this but he won't be he won't be able to because he he's at his limit already and this is when Deku would see Kachan or Bakugo and we're running in as he would throw his book at Bakugo I'm not at the slip well yeah actually at Bakugo but the sludge villain, um, or where Bakugo was, which is where the sludge villain's eyes are. Now, the bag would hit the sludge villain as Deku would try and grab Bakugo. He's promised Itachi not to use his quirk, and he won't. But Deku might have to. Now, no one would notice, but Deku would begin going with one-handed hand sign. As Deku takes in the deep breath, when this without anyone else noticing, Bakugo somewhat noticed, but put it in the back of his mind. As Deku blows out a wind, he says, "Wish down, great breakthrough." As this would, you know, blow apart the villain enough for him to grab Bakugo. As the villain and Deku begin to get in a tug war battle, but the slow villain was like, "You're too, you're too weak, kid." As a voice behind him says, "He may be, but I am, but I am not." Because, you know why? Because I am here. You know, I want to go. No, I don't want to do that, actually. I was going to say I want to do something and then say that, but no. Anyways, as All Might would then yell, United States Smash! As he would then punch the air and would send the slime villain everywhere. But this punch would change the weather. Everyone would just marvel at All Might's power or at all might's skill and well, overall quirk and power now all might will be swarmed by press and deku will be well scolded by the pros for being for doing what he did but they will also tell deku that it was a good thing that he did that he did because he was able to partially get get bakugo out now deku will begin to walk home when Bakugo would come up to Deku and tell him thank you, but would say that he doesn't need his help and he shouldn't have saved him, that he could have saved himself, so he would walk away. With Bakugo having a smirk on his face, saying, You finally have a quirk. You finally show your quirk, huh, Deku? After all these years of hiding it from you, you finally do. Now, I know you guys are wondering, what is Bakugo talking about? Now, once day, one day, Deku did go out to a forest and trained there for a little bit. And Bakugo was, um, went to that forest to, you know, um, well, actually, he was spying on Deku because Deku's been acting very weird. It was just a coma thing. And so he went there to spy on Deku, only to see Deku using um, a fire jutsu, or well, the fireball jutsu. So, you know, he wasn't going to say anything, but he realized that his friend finally activated his quirk and this is actually one of the reasons why Deku um Bakugo bullied Deku because all these years Bakugo and his friends bullied Deku um for not having a quirk and all these years Deku won't reveal it and Bakugo's been trying to get Deku to reveal it so that everyone will leave him alone and he won't have to bully him anymore because you know Bakugo is more of a 
follower and a leader at the same time. He followed the example, then became the leader of it all. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways, now Deku would be continue, continue walking around when he would see All Might or Toshinori Yagi. And All Might was a kid. What you did there was very reckless, but very heroic. I haven't seen anything like that in years. Especially from a kid, none the rest. <clears throat> you saw that you took you from what you did. I pushed um what you did caused me to push my limits. Without a quirk, you jumped in just to save your friend. Your legs moved without you um your legs just moved in thing. As Deku nods, all me says good. Now that I know that, I want to tell you something. Izuku Midori, I choose you to be my successor. The next wielder of one for all. <clears throat> now, Izuku will say, huh? It's all I will tell Izuku about his quirk and tell Izuku that he wants him to choose that he wants him to be a successor. Now Izuku would do something that you guys wouldn't expect. He would tell All Might to find another successor. But if that successor doesn't come up to his standards like he does, then he will take All Might's quirk. As All Might would not he would say that he hopes to see him very soon. As All Might would then tell Deku to meet him at Takaba Beach. Takaba, Takaba Beach. I forgot. I legit just rem was saying the name in another one that I filmed, and I can't remember it. At the beach, and for him to train him to, you know, inherit his quirk and never to be, and never, you know what I'm trying to say. I am inevitable, inevitable be boy. Damn, my English. Anyways, impeccable. Anyways. Deku will not, and the next day Deku will meet All Might at the beach where they will be, where All Might will begin to train Deku to handle his quirk and to remove the trash and all those things. And this is where the 10 month training period and a 10 month time skip come into place, and where I will be ending off the what if. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Personally, I did. I will see you guys later. Drip Kage out. Alright, so this is part two, so let's get into the what if. Now, I did film this in parts, but this is originally just, it's just going to be a movie. It's because the parts system helps me film movies better, so I'm sorry about that. Anyways, now, this is where we get into the 10, uh, well, we just got into the 10-month time skip with Deku. And now, Deku will be on his way to, well, well, to the UA, to UA for the entrance exams. And upon arriving, we'll see a girl that's actually being um, picked on. She will see that this girl is actually dressed like some other people, and has a school symbol on her, on her, um, on her, um, on her tracksuit or jumpsuit. Now Deku's actually been recommended, do um, given from all my being given the recommendation exam, but he's here to take the practical exam with the other students. And he's already taken the, um, you know, the recommendation portion of the, um, the recommendation exam and all those things. But he's doing a practical exam with the rest. So that's all Deku's here for. <clears throat> and Deku did score pretty high marks. Using his Sharingan, Deku was very intelligent. With the Sharingan basically storing almost every, no all knowledge that he has. Anyways, Deku would come up to them and tell them to leave her alone. So they would say, why? She has such a useless quirk. All she can do. Hmm. Who do I want this to be, actually? Let me think about that right quick. This is Suyu Asui. And she says all she is, all she can do is act, do what a frog can do. As Deku would say, and frogs actually have very many fascinating abilities. And if she can do what a frog can do, then she'll be a great pro hero. Now, Suyu would think, think Deku and the other girls would scoff and would walk away. Deku would help Suyu up and Suyu would, um, or Asui, or Su, would, um, thank Deku so much and would, um, say that she hopes to see him in UA, or she hopes that he passed the UA entrance exams. They would continue on to the different portions. Now, Deku would, um, be ready as President Mike will begin to explain 
but the practicals and no, because Deku didn't have to take the test, and you know, Prison Mike didn't force until uh, Deku to wait outside until it was time for him to come in for the practical exam. Now they're on their way to the practical exam portion or place arena, where Prison Mike will begin to talk. Telling everyone to get ready, but Deku is already taking off. As he already, you know, Itachi is drilled into his head that no battle, you know, has a start point. It just, be, it just, well, it has a start point, but no battle gets, you know, lets everyone have time to prepare. It just starts. So, you know, unless you prepare beforehand, you know, but it just starts. And Deku learned this lesson from Itachi a lot. So he's already rushing in, killing robots. As he says, you as Prison Mike says, you should take out it after his example. Go, go, go! As everyone will run into the um into the well the city, it will begin destroying robots. But by that time, Deku has already amassed a total of thirty five points due to him using the Shadow Clone Zutsu. Now I know Itachi probably has not displayed it. He probably has Crow Clone. He probably had to you know cop you copy base it. It's basically based off of the. Shadow Clone Jutsu, so he should obviously know it. So, yeah. And, yes, Deku, that means Deku has Chakra instead of, you know, Quirk Energy is what I'm going to call it. Which is actually just an evolution of Chakra. Like how, um, or like, um, how nin Ninjutsu developed, um, ev evolved into Ninjutsu. Well, Ninjutsu devolved a little bit into Quirk Energy. Or Chakra and devolved it to Quirk Energy, giving everyone their quirks. That's how Quirk came to be in this world. Anyways, moving on. Deku has already amassed, what, did I say 35 points already before everyone will get in? And he's continuously destroying robots. This is when Deku will see a, um, will see a boy with engines in his legs. He says, wow, his legs must have hurt awakening his quirk. As the man, as Deku would be able, using his Sharingan would be able to keep up with him. But Deku would think that this kid is actually pretty slow compared to him. Now, Itachi, jo we don't, there's actually no set speed of how fast Jonin are. As far as I've seen in the anime. Now, I know that they're actually extremely fast. So, really, and Itachi was on the level. So, Itachi is pretty fast. You know, he wasn't also an Anbu captain. He was the top tier when it comes to Anbu. And my my opinion, he would have been a good candidate to become a Hokage if he didn't have to massacre his clan. Anyways, moving on. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> Anyways, moving on. Deku would track Ida with his, well, with his Sharingan. And we'll see how Ida is manipulating his chakra or quirk energy to activate his quirk. As he sees that Ida, you know, is, you know, no longer, you know, like, um, his quirk energy is actually only really activated in his eyes and in his legs. But the quirk energy in his legs is more, fo it's like it's spread around his legs, but it's more focused than where the engines are. Now, um, Deku would say that if Ida was to focus that within his entire body rather than his entire legs, then he could possibly, and I mean possibly, move a little bit faster. Because if, you know, if a person were to use chakra to amp their muscles, then they would be more, they would be faster than normal. That's what I'm saying. Anyways, moving on. Deku, I mean, Deku, I'm sorry. Deku will continue on destroying robots. And we'll be getting to a 14 minute time, or no, a 13 minute time skip. This is where everyone will begin to hear stomping and Deku will see everyone running away. This is where the zero pointer would appear. Now, Deku wouldn't fall on his feet on his, um, he wouldn't fall down, and like he did in canon, but, you know, and was he catch, catch an earlier glimpse of Uraraka as he sees the building fall on Uraraka. Now, Deku would run to Uraraka and would make a shadow clone to help him get the rubble out and to evacuate Uraraka with everyone else. As Deku says, didn't think out how to use this, but, <sighs> What can I do? As Deku will begin to go through hand signs. As Deku says, Fire style. 
fireball jutsu because yes Deku was basically taking down all of the robots with hand to hand jutsu he didn't really think he would have to use his ninjutsu as he begins to you know release a continuous flame on upon the um upon the zero pointer now Deku while doing that Deku has his showing on activated looking for his weaknesses now Deku finally spots a weakness around the head area now upon arriving Deku would then jump up and climb um and will walk up vertically upon the zero pointer as Deku would then make shadow clones or enable all go to his five limbs, his head, the two arms, and his legs, and they will target a single place. They say fire style, fireball jutsu. So they let out a flame that ends up heating up the machinery where there's actually a little weakness there, where the machinery doesn't curve cover the circuits right there. And this would in turn destroy the robot. Now, Deku will be falling to the ground, but will throw a kunai with a string on it. Now, yes, Deku does use kunais also. Or oh, with, um, with, shin, with wire on them. I've seen we use that to catch himself or to swing away. Until he can land on the side of a building and walk down. But President Mike would announce the end of the entrance exams, and everyone would leave to go home. Now... This is where um, Deku would, uh, Deku's mom would ask, "How did it go?" As Deku would say, he really pretty, he did pretty well. Now the amount of points this man a lot of role, I mean this the amount of points that this man has gotten actually set a UA record. I'm not, I'm gonna tell you what um, Deku had two hundred points. Now with the rescue, this would add another hundred. But that two hundred points out um. Overshadow All Might's record. Now this would completely shatter it. Well, it already shattered it, but this would go over that record that he's already set. So Deku would have the highest record. Well, we have the record for the most points scored in the entrance exam. But then by now, <clears throat> now okay, now so Deku would get into this is where we would get into a time skip where Deku mom would walk in as she would tell Deku, "It's here, it's here, Zuku." As Deku would take his thing, he would tell his mother that he's going to go for a while. He's going to go meet the person who's trained him for this. As, you know, Inka would not, as she, Deku would go to um, Tacoma Beach. I believe that's how you say it. I'm, I know I'm wrong. I, I feel it. I, I feel it that I'm wrong. But where he would meet All Might. See, All Might would say, hey, kid, did you get your UA entry exam letter? As Deku would tell All Might that he wants to open it in front of him. Now, Deku would then open the letter to see All Might. <laughs> um, he would look to All Might to see him rubbing the back of his legs, um, the back of his head, laughing. As he said, uh, I forgot to tell you. As All Might would then give the De Deku the message that he passed. And he did so well in the practical exam portion. And that he set a record. Now, All Might would ask, then, um, would then tell Deku. That he has been accepted into UA, as he would say, "Welcome to your hero academia." Now, Deku would look at All Might, and All Might would say, "Good job, kid. You overshadowed my record. You shattered my record." Deku would nod, as All Might would tell then tell Deku, "What as Deku? What was that power that he used?" Deku would say, "That was my power." As All Might says, "I thought you were quirkless." Deku says, "No." I just want, well, technically I am. It's hard to explain, but I'll explain it to you one day, All Might. And she says, how has your search been? Deku said, as All Might would then say, he found one person. But he didn't get a grim look, as he says, but he's not worthy. Not like you were. As Deku would nod, as he says, well, that's the case then, All Might. I accept. All Might would stand up, as he would smile. As All Might would then go into his buff move form, she would grab a piece of his hair and would say, eat this. As Deku says, what? As All Might says, you have to eat a full piece of my DNA for it to transfer. As Deku says, this is the weirdest thing ever. As he would take the hair and would swallow it, and it would get caught in the back of his throat. As Deku would ask All Might for some water, which All Might would conveniently, conveniently have. As Deku would um, drink the water and it would bring down the... Um, bring down the it will bring down the hair, it will allow him to swallow the hair easier, and Deku would inherit one for all. 
It's online with their Intel Deku. Thank you. And Deku says, who was this other person? As Deku says, his name was Mirio. I mean, online would say his name was Mirio. But he didn't tell him that he was, you know, going to give him his quirk. He just told, he was just, you know, testing him on how heroic it is. Now, while he was heroic, like, uh, he was super heroic, actually, and had a true hero way. He wasn't in the way of Deku was. As Deku would nod, as All Might would then thank Deku, telling him that now, with whatever power he has, now, one for all, has um finally has a chance to, with well, mixing with Deku's power, finally has a chance to possibly take down All for One. Well, he would then explain what All for One is and tell Deku that he is his mortal enemy. As Deku will not as you know, Deku would then tell All Might thanks for everything. As he would leave, and this is I believe it was like a month or a week later, Deku would finally be ready for his first day at UA. Now Bakugo heard about Deku, and um, when Deku got in, and in, he Inko told Miski, and Miski told Bakugo. Now Miski was shocked when Bakugo didn't have any reaction until she heard, saw Bakugo go into his room. It then we get to scream, yes, he made it. As Miski smiles, saying, hmm. As Bakugo was always when, uh, with his quirk, well, was never the strongest, but he was more like he taught, um, like, you know, like the Shisui for Itachi. He was more like his big brother. So, you know, he did, you know, look out for it. I don't want to bring that, that really shit. He was more like a big brother for Itachi. Itachi and, and for Deku. And Deku was more like his um little brother. And to Deku, Bakugo was his big brother. I believe Bakugo was older than Deku, which is why I'm saying this. But it's not by much, though. Anyways, upon the first day arriving, Deku would, find, would come across the same girl that he saved at the world that he stopped the other from bullying at the beginning of the exam. She would say, Sue, right? And Sue would say, oh, you made it. You passed. And Deku said, yeah. He says, I actually got in on recommendation, but I kind of volunteered to take the practical exam. He says, so you didn't have to take that. And that means you wouldn't have been there and I wouldn't have saved you. Yeah. But good thing I did. And she would thank Deku. Is they would walk to class together. Now Deku did not have the um actually he might not have had the same interaction 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 with Iraraka at the beginning, but he still did save her. You know, Iraraka did go to the principal um to the uh to the school to try to get Deku some of her points. Now she actually doesn't know how much points Deku scored. Anyways, moving on. That means some agua. Anyways, moving on. Deku and Suyu would walk into class, but Deku would seek Bakugo. As Bakugo would be there at the door just waiting for Deku to open. He says, good, you're finally here. As everyone um, sees Bakugo staring at what, you know, he looks angry but Deku, to everyone else, but he's not actually angry. He's actually proud. As Deku says, gotcha. As, you know, Bakugo would then grab Deku. As he would bring him into a hug. As he would say, finally, you finally showed off your power. I was wondering how many years of bullying it would take for me to get you to use it. But you finally showed it off. As Deku would ask Bakugo, what is he talking about? As Bakugo would then tell Deku that he spotted him one time in the forest, training his power. When he, when he was acting, he began to act weird and began to follow Deku. To see what he was, um, what was wrong with him, and followed him into a forest where he was training with his power, and then began starting to bully Deku even more, so that he would use his power, so the others would stop bullying him. As Deku says, "You couldn't have just told me not to, you know, to use my power or something, use some power, and show them that I had at least a quirk or something." As Bakugo was scr uh, scratch his head, he says, I actually didn't think of that. That was a good idea, Deku. <sighs> Deku would sigh. 
He says, come on, Bakugo. And she says, oh, right, Bakugo, this is Suyu Asu. I kind of saved her from being bullied earlier. Um, well, before the entrance exam started. Oh. Well, what was your score? As Deku will begin, but Aizawa, Aizawa will come in and he will say, if you're here to make friends, then leave. As Deku will turn around, as he already sensed Aizawa, he was just going to continue his situation. As uh, um, not situation, his conversation. As Deku says, you finally made yourself known, huh? So as I was saying, so you knew I was behind you and just didn't care. Deku says, no, not really. As Deku and Bakugo and Suyu will all walk away to go sit down, and well, um, <clears throat> as I would then introduce himself and would then tell everyone to be prepared to use, well, to um, put some PE uniforms on. Now, Deku would ask Aizawa, is the special order that he had, uh, is the special request for all of his PV outfits, has, has that been made? As Aizawa would nod and would hand Deku a box of PE equipment. Now, this is a bunch because, you know, they might break things in there. Now, we're going to say that it was a month before Deku, after the entrance exam that Deku did get into A, and during that month, he was training with All Might. On how all might use on how to use one for all. So yes, all might was actually a pretty adequate teacher along with Itachi. Now something sad is actually about to happen, so let's get into that. Well, actually after this. So anyways, as I will say, meet me outside, everyone. As Deku will take the um box with him and they will all go to the locker room. Now upon uh, dressing, Bakugo will say, "Damn, Deku, when did you get to look like that?" As Deku says, "Oh." I've been training my whole life, so kind of been my build. Bakugo says, "You should train me." As Deku say, um, "I guess." As Bakugo will ask, "What um, what special request did he ask to be put in?" As Deku will grab out a pair, as he would um, as grab out his gym uniform, as it would then be black with red clouds, and on the back is an Uchiha symbol. This is basically his representation to Itachi, as Deku would say, it's a representation to my master, or my sensei of sorts. As Bakugo would nod, he would say, oh, well, it looks pretty cool. As everyone says, you can put in requests for that? As Deku would laugh, and they would, everyone would continue on. Now, oh damn, this is going to be what, a two-hour movie? I might make this a two-part movie. I'm not sure. It's gonna be long as hell, I'll tell you guys that. Anyways, moving on. Deku. <laughs> Deku. Had act. Um, and everyone began to get dressed and to go outside. Well, Aizawa would then um, throw Deku a ball, tell him to stay in that circle and throw the ball while using his quirk, as long as he stayed in the circle. Now, everyone would ask why did he give it to Deku. As Aizawa says, Deku set a school record during the practical exam. With a total of points of around 300. All Might's was at a good, I'm going to say All Might's set, 165. Deku got 200 um, villain points and 100 in hero points. Now, Deku did remember what All Might said about hero points in the, in the hologram, so, you know, he did know what that was about. As everyone will be shocked to see, uh, will look at Deku. She says, now, go. As everyone will see Deku open his eyes, as Aizawa sees this, he says, is he like me? As Aizawa would um, then, and everyone will see Deku's eyes morph into a different pattern, as a red skeletal figure would appear. But then it will begin to grow legs, as it will begin to stand up. As everyone's jaws are just dropped, even Bakugos, he says, damn you Deku, I'll catch up to you. As he as Bakugo then says, from now on we're rivals. As Deku then um, using the toast, uh, the blade inside of the uh, man's hand would throw the ball up and would then smack it away. Um, with the blade in in the Susanoo's hand. Now, as, as I said, Deku did progress the Susanoo even further than what Itachi did around the level, but you we all you complete a complete body Susanoo. Now we all know that you need the eternal one get killed to get the full body, the like the not the full body, the perfect Susanoo. So to stabilize the perfect Susanoo, which is actually 
I ain't gonna hit. Actually, I'm not gonna hint to it. You'll see guys see soon. Anyways, Deku, upon taking, upon doing this, will get a record of three thousand. No, 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 four thousand meters. Or actually, I want to do this even better. Four. I'm gonna go see what's the biggest one, and I'm gonna do that. Four thousand kilo mile, kilometers. I don't know. All right, four thousand miles actually. All right, that's actually a pretty good distance. No, no, no. Four thousand meters. We're gonna do four thousand meters to make that even fair, cause that's probably too long for me, or for that anyone to get. Now, as all those jaws we drop. Now, and everyone else will do. Is there gonna be just a thing? Yeah, I don't want to fight Deku. As Deku will drop down, as as I was says. 4,000 meters. Good time. As Aizawa would turn away, as, I, every, as no one noticed, but Aizawa's hands were shaking. From seeing the utter amount of power, the power that Deku just emitted. As in his head, Itachi says, did you really have to do that? Deku says, well, he said to use my power, and I wanted to use it to its utmost level. But to use the Tosca blade as a bat. Disrespectful. Deku will say, <laughs> as the rest of the exams will go much, um, much the same. But except Deku is sold in every single one, even beat Mineta in the side jumps. Um, he he actually got the best scores out of everyone. He set a um record in every single one of how fast he did. With Itachi basically just using a body f or Deku, I might refer to him as Itachi, and sometimes I might refer to him as Deku. But he, um, Deku would use the body flicker for the 50 meters and everything else. And would actually, for the group test, Deku would have a Susano. <laughs> would use a Susano to do the grip test. So, yes, Deku did excel in almost, in, well, actually, in everything. Becoming f the first place student. Now, he was already placed at number one, but he kept that spot and was holding on to it tight. With Momo coming second, now everything is just. From Deku up, um, wherever Deku was at, everyone else has just moved down one. Everyone above Deku has moved down one, while Deku has moved to the top place. So those are the rankings still. Anyways, they will all go to class. And Aizawa um, would then congratulate Deku, telling him to not use that, um, that amount of power anymore. <laughs> Just for a quick analysis test. Deku says, but you... As I, as I will grab his head, he says, right. As, as I will say, so I'm still in, things to himself are still in shock from the amount of power he showed us. This kid could possibly be the symbol of peace. Now imagine this. Deku has not even used one for all at all. So yeah, imagine that. Alright, anyway, anyways, anyways, anyways. Deku and everyone else will continue on, and this is where we will time skip around like a day, five day, day five days later. Now Deku and everyone has finally finished their last class and are ready for their hero training. This is where All Might will come into the door scene. I am here in a normal position. I believe that's how he said it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. I guess. As everyone begin to yell, All Might, as, you know, All Might would say, suit up, kids. After all, the suit makes the hero. Or the suit makes the pro. I'm getting a lot of things wrong. I might have to refresh myself up with um, my hero. As, anyways, All Might would then press the button as a bunch of hero costumes would come on. But everyone will see another slot come out with a bigger case. She says, Zuki Midoriya, your request was accepted, and your case is there. As Deku would not even go to get his case. Now, Deku's case is a lot bigger than everyone else's because it houses two different costumes. Now, Deku, everyone will go to Deku's costume, um, as Deku owes it in front of the entire class. As everyone's, um, no, 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 actually, no. This is where we time skip to everyone coming out of the tunnel f with their costumes on and everything. Waiting is everyone's wanting to see which what costume Deku has. Is everyone all my did tell them that Deku has two costumes, so they'll just have to see which costume he used. 
So everyone's walking out, waiting. But this is when everyone will see Deku come out. Deku will be wearing basically Itachi's um, Itachi's Akatsuki uniform, so that with his fingernails painted. He does have still have Itachi's stretch mark. As he has um, on the headband on. As Deku actually has two. These are the Konoha headband. One has a slash and one doesn't. The other one is for his other outfit, which you guys will see what it is actually pretty soon. And everyone will say, whoa, Deku. So cool. So all the girls, you know, get a little, you know, Deku, you know, get a little bit red in their face. As, you know, Deku's a pretty handsome man. I ain't go, I'm not ashamed to admit, Itachi's a pretty handsome man. So, and he did get all the girls, even. Um, he was actually adding attention. I'm gonna take this one together. He did have, uh, he was pretty much of a chick magnet, even while in school. Um, but even without a quirk, Deku did was a pretty good chick magnet, if I'm just saying. I think that's an outdated term. Anyways, all my would say, Good looks, Midoriya. As he would say, all right, everyone, we're going to be doing hero training. It'll be hero versus villains. Now, I have already drawn a team and drawn it at random. So he will then yell out the uh, teams, but the only team we care about is the team that goes first, which is Deku, Bakugo, Uraraka, and Tenya Ida. So he would say, on the hero team, <clears throat> Izuku Midoriya. Ochaka Uraraka. Chaka Uraraka. I put I even pronounced her name wrong. Oh my god. Tenya Ida as the villain with the villains team and Koski Bakugo. As Deku and Bakugo everyone will see Deku and Bakugo smirk as they would then bump fists and says, try not to lose to each other. And everyone would think they must be close friends. Or rivals at least. As All Might would say um, Tiro teams has five minutes to prepare. Go on. As this is where everyone would get their five. The, the team would get their five minutes to prepare, and they would. Now, all men would then tell them to start. Now, upon arriving, Deku would then tell um tell her to um just stay right here. That this is probably the best course of action. Well, actually, to um grab on. And this is when um, Uraraka would, um, Deku would get down for a piggyback sound. Uraraka would say, is this part of the plan? Deku would say, yes, just grab on. Uraraka would jump on Deku's back. As Deku would begin to disperse to a bunch of crows. As he begins to carry, the crows begin to carry Uraraka around. Now the real Deku is actually still outside. And is actually walking around the building looking for where the bomb is. So, um, this is where Bakugo, you know, went off still, but, you know, more of a, he wants to fight his rival of sorts, to look for Deku or things, like that, and would find a bunch, and would be attacked by a bunch of crows where Uraraka would then, or Bakugo would then feel something on his hand, this is being counter tape, as, in his ear, he was here, all my say, Bakugo Koski has been captured. Bakugo says, what? How? As Uraraka then drops out of the um, things of crows, as the crows reform Deku. Reform into Deku's. Everyone says, that ability, it's so useful. What is that? As All Might says, I don't know. They ask, you want to ask, is, what is Deku's quirk exactly? All Might would then tell De them that um, Deku's quirk is actually pretty unique. That Deku's quirk is he call he likes to call his quirk chakra. As everyone would you know would be confused a little bit, but well, take that answer. Like why would he call it chakra? But obviously they would take that answer. Anyways, moving on. Deku. Would then um continue, would then reflock into uh or re disappear within a bunch of crows. He would tell Uraraka to keep an eye on Bakugo. And All Might would then say that's actually good thinking to have once capture their enemy, to never just leave that enemy unattended, that that enemy could possibly get away. 
as Deku comes across the room where the bomb's at, and he would throw, a, as a kunai would appear in his hand, as he would throw it past Ida. Now, Ida would say, Ha, you missed. As Deku says, Did I? As the window, um, the window breaks where Deku was, um, where Deku threw a kunai, actually rented, originally intended, which is where the real Deku is. Well, the real Deku would then use the crow clone Jutsu, or, um, but we'll actually look at Ida and Mikasa again, Jutsu, which, and everyone was, or no, everyone, he would see that, everyone would just see basically a bunch of crows coming through the window. They say that he, he used his quirk again. Whatever it is, it's pretty useful. As Deku walks, um, um, the crows begin to attack Ida. As the, Ida doesn't notice the, uh, the, the Deku that threw the kunai turn into that bunch of crows as the real Deku, you know, becomes Deku again. It touches the bomb with all my screaming, HEROES WIN! And this announces the end for team, uh, or actually we're gonna say they were the last people to go for, um, for the team, which will actually crown with Deku becoming the MVP of this match. Thinking, even thinking so far ahead of if on the off chance of his enemy escaping once captured. So, you know, it was good that he thought of that. Anything like that. Thing that most heroes would just leave a villain unattended, and on any case, the villain might just escape or something. So, anyways, moving on, um, Deku will be walking, um, well, actually, he will be getting ready to leave Uwe, well, he will be approached by one girl, a girl with, wait for it, black hair, this being Momo Nairobi. Now, Momo would then tell Deku that he's pretty cute, and will then ask Deku out on a date. Now, Deku would accept this. Now, um, two girls are watching. Well, actually, one girl is watching um, this happen. As she says, damn you, Momo. You took him away. I never even got the chance. This, we, will, we should all know who this is. This is not Uraraka. This is Suyu Asui. Yeah, that kind of happened. He did, uh, you know, kind of, she kind of developed a crush on Deku. Anyways, Deku would then ask Momo where does he want to go, as Momo would then tell Deku, why don't they, why does he pick, as Deku would then say, why don't they go to a, a skating rink and an arcade and hang, or basically just do like a fun type of date. As Momo would agree, and would agree to meet him tomorrow after school for the date. And she would give Deku her number and they would continue on with their date. Now, this is where we time skip to the next day, at preferably after school, as Deku is being, um, is finally getting prepared for this date. And he has told his mother about this and everything. And his brother was extremely happy for Deku. So, you know. She's extremely happy for Deku because of the fact that Deku, you know, was um got a date. Something that he's um that she knows a bunch of girls. You know, she knows a bunch of girls chase Deku. But for De um for a girl to, you know, I would approach him to, you know, ask him out a date. Something that all most other girls are actually afraid to do. They actually Deku just had more of a following than more of a more like a fan club that followed him rather than ask him out on dates. But yeah, anyways, she will be proud of Deku. Will tell him to treat the girl right and to never make her cry. And Deku will say, "I guess." As Deku will head out for his date with Momo. Now, upon meeting Momo, Deku would drop his jaw at how beautiful Momo is. Momo's wearing a black dress that really hugs his soul. Now, I know you guys are saying, "Bro, are you sexualizing fifteen-year-olds?" I'm sixteen. This don't matter. Now, <clears throat> anyways, Deku would, um, Momo would grab Deku's jaw and would, um, lift it to close his mouth as he would say, 
wow, you look really beautiful. As Momo will bless him and say thank you. As Momo will look at Deku and her jaw will drop. Deku's um Deku's hair is in more of a ponytail, m- more of a ponytail than what it normally is. Um, with um uh, his nails are painted um like it was normally. Uh, let's just hmm. He has on a red Nike. I won't actually let me. I'm gonna put a picture up of of the Itachi that's dripped that's dripped out. Okay. So that just imagine that. That's the picture is what you're gonna see and what Itachi looks like. I might not put it up. Don't hold me to it. Anyways, um, Deku would do the same thing that Momo did for him. Is they would continue on for the date. Now skating was actually pretty fun for Momo. You know, this is actually something she's never done, like, um, this type of skating. She's never roller skated. Or, no, no, not roller skating. Yeah, she's never roller skated. Um, did roller skating. She's done ice skating, you know, rich people stuff. But, you know, she's never roller skated like this. And she found it extremely fun with Deku. Now, Deku did notice that he had three people watching him. Well, two came from this um from the same direction, and one came from a different direction. Now Deku recognized all these people. Now, they will um after this Deku after filming this Chuck signature, Deku would ask Momo if she's ready to go to the arcade, where they would. And Deku and Momo would spend hours at the arcade, just winning every game with Deku using his Sharingan and everything. Um, to well, you know, to win all the prizes, Sharingan kind of helped him. Broken ability. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Deku and Momo will finally be ready to conclude their date. With Deku, and they will go to the arcade to cash in their tickets. Deku will then get Momo I, um, a gigantic ice cream. No, not like edible. It's like one of those plushies. And will tell Momo that he had a good time. As Momo would then grab Deku and would then bring him in for a kiss. But Deku... No, but actually, you know, enjoy this kiss and has actually enjoyed the date that much also. As he would also kiss Momo back and, you know, the session. They will, they will then both hear someone say, what the f- what? As, but this is their first date. As everyone, um, would then look, the other two people who are following Deku and Momo would look, everyone else would look too, they would see, see, Sue so, watching Deku and Omomo with his jaws drop, and they will also see that um Sue so has an angry look on her face. As Sue so then jumps away, crying, Deku says, "What happened?" As Momo says, "I I didn't know she had a crush on you." Deku says, "Sue so had a crush on you. Why was she like me of all people?" Momo says, why wouldn't she like you? Like, it, That would probably be the best thing to say. You're kind of dense, aren't you, Deku? Deku says, no. I just didn't notice. As Deku then says, well, now that, that she's been exposed, Mom, Toshinori, come out. As they say, damn, you've been caught. As yes, Toshinori and Inko did spot, spot each other spying on Deku and Momo's date. So yes, All Might did learn about Deku's date. Because um, Deku did ask him for some advice. Yeah. Anyways. Moving on. Bada boom. Pow. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, Deku um, would tell them why are they spying on him. And Momo would say, Deku, is that? One of the teachers from UA? As Deku says, yeah, he kind of trained me for 10 months to help me get into UA. As All Might um, would then get a proud look on his face. He says, but he didn't teach me everything I know. As All Might would deflate a little, saying, oh. As um, Deku would say, Mom, what are you doing here? She says, I, I just wanted to make sure that date went well. Deku says, oh, could you please leave? I'm going to walk Momo home. As Momo and Deku, Deku would end up walking Momo home, but upon arriving home, Deku kind of doesn't want the date to end. You get what I'm putting down. As Deku and Momo 
would be um Deku would grab Momo and would kiss Momo. Momo, Momo I said Momo. Momo would pull Deku into the house and they would be doing a little bit of um gardening if you get what I'm putting down. Planting seeds. No, wait, no. Wait a minute, it's fifteen. No, not yet. Uh uh-uh. uh. Planting seeds, but there's a little bit of a barrier keeping that seed from being planted if you get what I'm putting down. This is really weird for me to talk about. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but later that night, um, Deku would come home late at night as Inko and All Might are waiting. Uh, Inko would ask Deku, where has he been? As Deku um, has been sweating a little bit, you know, after his session with Momo, as he says, I was with Toshinori. As Toshinori would turn around and see, he says, try again. But this is death. She says, fine, I was with Momo. As Inko... As Toshinori begins to smile, he says, Good job, Izuku. Young Midoriya. As Inko would then slap um, um slap Toshinori on the back of the head and then would then punch Deku in the gut, saying, Deku, really? Why would you do that? Deku says, We, yeah, it happened. And I kind of enjoyed it, and she did too. So I don't see a reason for us to stop. I mean, we are we are in high school. Things like this happens. Yeah. Nico says, "I guess you're right." Oh, I just can't think about it. I'm going to bed. Um, talk to Mister Toshinori. It's, Deku would not. Toshinori says, "Huh." Inko hasn't changed at all. Deku would not. Would not. If they say, "Wait, what?" She says, "Yeah." I, you may not know this, but I'm. Actually, kind of a uh, childhood friend of Inko's. As Deku would say, really? She says, yeah. I kind of, uh, well, not more of a childhood friend, actually. I was kind of her babysitter. I believe All Might is older than Inko. So, yeah. He says, I'm kind of her babysitter when she was younger. So, you know, I kind of got to see her to grow. I got, kind of got to see her grow. I'm glad she grew into a fine young woman and even married and had a kid. Deku says, I did not know that. As All Might would then tell Deku, <clears throat> would then I'll give Deku an offer. He would then offer Deku to come with him and live with him, telling him that his house and everything has a special place for him to constantly train and use his powers, and actually can handle the power of one for all being used in it at a hundred percent. Deku would then tell tell All Might that he would have to tell they that if that's the case, then they would have to possibly tell his mother the truth, or she wouldn't let him come with him. As All Might would say, "You may be right." <sighs> I I guess it might be the only way to get you. It's the only way I could train you to fully. Have full use of one for all. As Deku would nod, and All Might and Deku would um would go to Inka and would drag her out of her room, and they would then sit down and explain everything to Inko about one for all, all, one for all, and those things. He wouldn't tell Inko about her his power yet, but things like that that would all happen. Now, Inko would then ask Deku, "Is this what he wants?" As Deku would say yes, as Inko would say fine, but make sure you come and visit me. As Deku would hug his mother, saying thank you. As I want to say, I'll come by to pick you up next week to pick your things, help you with the things next week. That's when you'll move in. I have to get a room prepared for you. As Deku would nod and would thank All Might. As um, All Might would leave, um, Deku would see All Might out of the house, and Deku would go to sleep. Now, this is where we get into, like, a week or two time skip. Deku's already moved into with All Might. And, well, this is actually, let's get into the um, USJ. So, Aizawa will come into class, tell everyone that they're going to be going to the USJ. Now, everyone would think that this was Universal Studios Japan, but All Might would instantly, you know, stop that, telling them, no, <laughs> you know, no, they're not doing that. And will tell them that they're going to, well, the what is it called? The hmm, you were wait a minute. I forgot the acronym. Let me think about it right quick. 
Also, I had it right. Well, I had the unforeseen part right. The unforeseen simulation joint. I did have to look it up to make sure I wasn't getting this term wrong. I really want to make sure I get the term right, actually. If I'm being honest with you guys. Once I have at least one thing right. Now, you would, as I would then tell every, give everyone permission slips, and would then tell them to go and have their parents sign this. Um, and the next day, everyone would have their permission slips signed, and they would all be go heading to U USJ. And upon arriving, Deku would see the Hero 13, but Deku would feel sort of imminent danger, not to himself, but to other everyone else. Deku can see it since that this power may be strong, but it's nowhere near his level. Now, yes, Deku does have the full power of Itachi, even more, actually, even better. Now, Deku, some things have happened to Deku during the time, well, during that two-week time skip. So, let's get in the tab before this, we get into the USJ incident. Now, Deku will be pulled into his mindscape with Itachi. As Itachi, Deku will see Itachi begin to glow, like a, what has a white glow to him. As Deku will ask Itachi what's happening, as Itachi says that he's merging with him. Or his soul his part of his soul is leaving while the rest is merging with him. As Itachi would then tell Deku to hold out his hands and to close his eyes. Upon doing this, Deku uh, Itachi would grab both of his eyes and take them out of his head as he would grab them in Deku's hand. As Deku will open his eyes to see two eyeballs, as he will freak out and say, what, what is this? What is this? As Tachi says, you're the key to the eternal Mangekyo Shonta. So yes, Deku does have the, the Tachi Mangekyo pattern and will get the eternal for a reason. For a reason that I want. So, um, Tachi will then tell Deku to place, um, in his mind to place each eye where the, his, um, where the eye, where the eyes go. Deku will freak out, but would do this. As um, Itachi then sees Deku's um, somewhat blindness that Deku's actually started to gain go away. As De as Itachi says, Deku, I am your new light, and you are mine. Do good by me. As Itachi would then grab Deku, it would say, No matter what you do, I will love you always. You've taught me what it's like to have a son, or more of another little brother, but more of a son. And I am proud of you, Deku, Izuku Midori. As Itachi will begin to fade from Deku's mindscape. Now, upon awakening in the real world, Deku would open his eyes with his, uh, well, with what he would think is his Mangekyo activated, but this is actually the Eternal, which is just Itachi's Mangekyo Sharingan pattern. I just couldn't, I was actually going to have it like, I was um, going to have a, um, have Itachi, like if two Itachi Mangekyo Sharingans merged, so it would be like a little star of sorts, like basically that. So get Itachi Sharingan, duplicate the image, and rotate it a little bit, basically that. And that's what I was going to do, but I decided no, not to do that. With reason. Anyways, moving on. Um, back after after the two weeks. Um, back into out of the flashback. Deku would then tell everyone to get down. This is when everyone would then a purple mist would then come come in front of them. Um, open up a portal in front of a fountain, as a bunch of people would come out. As I would say, villains. As he would tell everyone that they need to leave. This is when Kurigiri would appear behind them and would say no. As in, um, as Deku has already gotten down, run down towards the metal to start fighting villains. As Deku has already taken down ten villains before, um, when he saw Kurigiri disappear. And Aizawa later joins Deku to help him fight. And Aiza um, and not Aizawa, and you know Kurigiri warped away everyone that was normally warped away, cannon except for Deku. Now, upon knowing this, De um, as I would tell Deku, what is he doing? Because Deku says, being a hero, I have to help. I couldn't, I can't just let them get away with this. As he says, you have an immeasurable amount of power, so I don't blame you for helping. At least you're putting your powers to use. 
but why don't you go help some of the students? As he would point to the, well, to the, the flood zone, where Deku would not and would run off towards the flood zone, where he would see Suyu and um, Mineta on a boat about to be attacked by villains. Now, this is when Deku would begin running on water and would um, walk, run past all the villains. As Deku would grab Suyu, um, Su and Mineta, but Deku would see Su struggling in his arms. And Su says, let go of me. As Deku says, why? As Su says, why don't you go hug Momo or grab Momo? Deku says, we don't have time for this. As the Susano begins to appear, uh, or the skeletal version of the Susano uh, appear around Deku, Su, and Mineta. Deku, as Mineta says, so cool. Deku shakes his head as he then looks, stares at all the villains who have arrived on the boat. As he placed them all under a Sukuyomi. They have all been stabbed by Deku for a total of 100 hours. Just 100 hours. I just do that number out. 100 hours. No, no, no. 96 hours. Which is four days. Four days worth of torture all of them are going through. They all fall to the ground, and Deku gets Su and Mineta out of the flood zone. But Deku would then see Aizawa being basically having his skull beaten into the ground by a silver, by not by a silver thing, by a giant blue bird creature. This is when Deku would appear in front of the bird creature and would then kick it away. And then Deku does have some power. I mean. If, I don't, if I'm being honest, if any of the main protagonists, antagonists, the more powerful characters of Naruto were to go to the My Hero World, some things will give them a challenge, but overall, nothing will challenge them. Like, um, almost everything else, that it would be low difficult for them. Like, people like All Might, you know, All Might, All for One, they might put up a challenge. You know, Shigaraki, Deku, those are some of the people, the, uh, I forgot what was her name, the number one hero in America, they might, they will put put up a challenge for the Naruto characters, but I honestly believe, in my honest opinion, that they would eventually, you know, come out on top with some difficulty. I'm not saying that they don't put up no fight, but there's some difficulty for the Naruto character. Like, the more powerful, like... Itachi, because, you know, he has a gigantic freaking samurai avatar made of complete chocolate. That's the, basically the ultimate defense. Except when you go against another, when you go against a Suzuki on the level of Jigen. That, that's not a defense. It's just a layer of protection. It ain't going to protect you either. It's cheap protection. But, yeah, that's really my honest opinion, especially with Itachi. Itachi has flames that burn hotter than the sun. Which I, I believe Dobby's flames can blue flames are the strong uh, the um, hottest flames, so I do believe Dobby's flames could go hotter. But uh, other than that, Itachi or Deku would have the strongest flames. He would have the best protection. The Tosca blade legit seals away um seals away people that it stabs and. Like, yeah, you may be able to ab avoid the gigantic sword, but everyone would, you know, come to the assumption that it's just gigantic, that all it could do is question they won't be able to stab them. That's what everyone's going to go with. So, that most people wouldn't dodge it. They would just try to take the attack, especially people like Muscular, all for one. All those type of people. I'm sorry for going on a rant. I'm so sorry about that. So, let's get back into it. Anyways... He will kick away the Nomu as Deku will begin to channel one for all, 20% for Kaolin. Now, Deku will then begin to focus most of his um, energy into his palm. As he says, as Deku learned about Itachi's um, Ambu Captain Kakashi and about his special move, the Raikiri, or, and the Chidori, which is actually not the same thing, if you know, if you know that. As Deku will say, as everyone, everyone in the arena would all look towards the middle where they would see Deku holding green lightning. But it sounds like a thousand birds chirping. Deku would say, Chidori! As everyone would see Deku move his arm back as the ground begins to get carved up. 
as Azawa looks at the Nomu, she says, kill it. As I know most heroes in here doesn't do that, but Aizawa, he, he can see that this is no longer a human, that it, he can even tell that it's no longer a human. Like, um, no human, actually, no one has dual quirks the way that the Nomus would have. So, obviously, Aizawa would understand that, and, you know, especially with, um, you know, Shigaraki telling him that the Nomus are no longer humans. They're just basically experiment, um, somewhat of a failed experiment of sorts, but a failed yet successful experiment, as I will say. I will call them a failed su yet successful experiment. Them because it's ugly. You couldn't make them look better. I'm sorry, but you couldn't. Anyways, moving on. As as I will disable the um, no moves quirk, as um Deku would then slam the Chidori directly. Directly into the Nomu's chest, directly through it, with so much piercing power and speed. The speed empathy Chidori grants someone is so great, as Deku kills, essentially kills the Nomu. Shigaraki would say, "That's not fair. This is not fair." As he begins to run towards Deku, but Deku would then, um, well, in his in his second version of variation of his hero costume, which I actually haven't revealed to anyone, which is actually Itachi's Ambu costume, will grab the sword on his back and will then slice off the hand that's on Shigaraki's face. Well, Shigaraki was standing there in shock. As Kurigiri says, no, no, as Kurigiri would then warp away Deku, I mean not Deku, warp away him and Shigaraki, leaving all the rest of the villains to be taken care of, by the rest of the, um, well, by the heroes, because either they get away to go tell everyone, like Canon, um, and, um, to get rid of the rest of the heroes before every, anything could happen. Now, Deku would then take Shigaraki's hand and keep it in, we'll say, souvenirs, huh? He says, maybe I can figure out how his quirk works if I use it, if I keep it. As, um, Deku, I don't know, I believe. What is his hands on? What are his hands on his body? Anyways, Shigaraki, upon arriving, will begin to disintegrate everything in his vicinity. Upon noticing he's in a new place, we'll stop it so that it wouldn't just, well, he wouldn't actually disintegrate everything in his vicinity, but it would disintegrate some things that are close to him, but we'll stop before it would get to a large scale. And this being, well, um, well, um, in the bar where the League of Villains hideout. Well, the League of Villains hideout. But Shigaraki says, it's not fair, not fair. He killed the Nomu. We didn't even get to see, we didn't even get to fight All Might. She says, who fought Nomu and killed him? This brat named Izuku Midoriya. He has a quirk. A powerful one. He was defeating our villains and killed the Nomu. And his awful one jaw, um, eyes were widen on the other side. He says, that's not possible. I took away his quirk when he was younger. Shigaraki would say, Master, what are you talking about? The awful one says, nothing, nothing that concerns you. He's, as Shigaraki would say, well, I'm going to kill this kid. As awful one says, but before you do, if you do capture the kid, I want you to bring him to me. I want to have a little talk with him and take away his quirk from him. And Shigaraki would smile. And so would Awful One. And this would signify the end. Well, they would both share a chuckle. And this would signify the end of the part one movie of What If Deku Was Itachi's Red Car. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Personally, I did. Now, they were most like, I'm not going to do two movies. I'm most likely going to be three or four movies. I'm so sorry. Maybe the next movie will be longer, so it will only be two movies. I hope you guys enjoyed the What If. I personally did. I loved recording this. This is actually the only video that I put out before I go on break for around like a week or two. If I'm not doing YouTube, maybe. I'm not sure. I hope you guys enjoy. I will see you guys later. Peace and goodbye.